So in this tutorial, we are going to start doing a very simple script. So we are starting to create a cube, very simple cube. We set the position, zoom in by pressing F. Uh, we can just uh, change the lighting setting just to make it look better. So real time global illumination tick, baked global illumination untick, and generate lighting setting just once so everything is uh, a little bit brighter and we can also uh, move our camera so select our main camera and press shift ctrl f or go to assets uh, no game object and press align with view so press it so you align the camera view to your uh, camera to your view all right and everything is set um, this cube is in zero 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 position um, where uh, we is is actually underground uh, which is okay for now mm. all right so let's add a simple behavior uh, script here uh, for now I'm gonna Turn off the gizmo. Uh, I'm going to go to my scripting folder, right click and create a C sharp script. If you don't have the folder, you can create a folder. And I'm going to name it simple cube behavior. You can name it whatever. Uh, double click to um, open the script and the visual uh, studio will launch. So my Visual Studio got launched here and this is the um, default script. So there is two different functions that is already provided. One is called start function or start method. Another one is called update function or update method. Uh, these two green lines are uh, command lines. So whatever is after to slash is a comment that is not calculated. It's going to skip by the script. So you can feel free to delete it or leave it just uh, as you wish. It's not going to affect your scripting. All right. So uh, basically what's the difference between these two is that start is ha happening only once in the beginning of the game. Update is going to uh, uh, calculate it all uh, every time uh, all over again and continuously during the play uh, just remember that and you will see what it means so okay so we are going to hook this up to the cube so let the cube to possess this script so in order to do that we are going to drag this cube behavior under cube directly like this to the cube object or to the inspector so wherever you do it's going to be happening or, or connected to here if you accidentally add it to somewhere else you can choose to remove it by right click and remove component uh, in this case this cube behavior is actually connected to the cube and now uh, you, whatever you write here is going to affect uh, what's affect the cube. So uh, in the start, let's kind of uh, do something about its translation. So you can uh, transform. So you can actually see that the cube have transform. It has mesh filter. It has mesh render and it has box collider this is coming by default uh, it always has a transform we can access this transform in the script and let it do something so first in the start uh, we can kind of say okay transform dot and we are going to translate it uh, so there's already some suggestions. If you say dot, it has suggestions. 
But if you don't have it, just type it. Make sure that you don't uh, make spelling mistake and it's case sensitive. So say translate. Translate is uh, uh, affecting the position of the transform. So uh, the translate requires, uh, it also tells you if you say bracket, it tells you what you need in order to translate. You need a vector three. There are six different options. You can see there is uh, also different ways to deal with it. And you can also have X, Y, Z float to translate. So for now, we are going to use this method. So we are going to translate this to, um, 0. Point, for example, 1.0f, 0.0f, 0.0f. F means float. Uh, so whatever it is a, a number that requires a de with decimal number, you have to say f at the end. Um, otherwise, it will confuse with another kind of number called double. Uh, don't have to worry too much about it but if you remember the translate requires three floats so that's why we need to provide a no float number okay so if we translate this and save save this so you don't have the start here um, and then you can minimize it for now and if you play it what's gonna happen is that this cube will change its position to 100. Zero, zero. So let's see if that's correct. So yeah, so x is that direction. So x is x went the other direction. So you see that now the position became 100. Zero, zero. So it only happened one time and after the it, the, the game is still playing, but the after it translates uh, did once it's not moving anymore but the game is was still on uh, so let's see what happens if we do this in the update so just copy this uh, line and then control uh, s to save it or you can save it by pressing this button and then go back to the script again you can see that it's actually moving continuously so actually it's actually doing it every every uh, time frame of the play i just paused it and but it's going forever to and translate uh, by one zero zero every frame on every frame uh, so for now we can make this number smaller for example so it actually uh, controls the speed as well so if you change your script like this what's happening now is that in the beginning of the scene the cube is translated what by one zero zero and then after that it's going to be translating by zero point one zero zero per frame so let's see if that's true so it should jump to one zero zero and then go slowly towards x direction okay so that's the difference between the start function and the update function um, what's gonna be uh, also quite useful is to understand different ways of adding behaviors uh, and you can have fun with it so another uh, simple uh, behavior can be about rotation so we can actually add a rotation this rotation also can possess uh, three float x axis x angle y angle z angle we are going to use this method 
so we are going to um, not translate because translate is going to go too far so we are going to let it do a, a kind of a turntable kind of thing so uh, we are going to let it rotate per y axis so 0.1 f on the y and other axis to be 0 so this uh, after this the cube should jump to this position in the start and it's going to rotate uh, on y-axis forever so I will save this and then let's play and that's how you control this behavior all right uh, additionally, uh, we can also add this speed value to be something as an input value that is uh, controlled from outside. So simply by saying public float uh, rotation speed, then we can give a default number, say 0.1f. And we are going to control C and replace this rotation Y axis number to this. Uh, and you uh, notice that this number is declared and assigned outside these two functions, which means outside of this parenthesis, this curly brackets. So make sure that it is positioned inside this big parenthesis and outside these two big parenthesis this small parenthesis all right and save uh, once you save it as this is public what public means is that voila you can see that the public any public uh, number uh, value that is declared in this position which means global which means this rotation speed is a global value of variables. This is accessible in Unity uh, inspector window. Uh, so you can see that now if you just click on the cube in the inspector, you can actually change this number during the runtime or any time. Uh, so you can even change it here now now this is rotating by this number you can actually change the speed during the runtime and when it goes minus it rotates on the other side and stuff so this is this now rotation speed became a global variable that can be accessed from outside so okay, we have covered uh, a very simple uh, add behavior adding script uh, scripting uh, tutorial.